everybody it's been four years since I did that first video and as you can see now I fell in love with painting and I've got my own workshop I think I've probably got most colours that Annie Sloan does plus a few more some of the end ones from um, Aldi which are fine they're absolutely okay and then I've got a stock down here ready and waiting because I don't like to be out of paint this is one of the ones I'm in the middle of doing at the moment it's not quite finished yet but we're getting there so I've decided today I'm going to show you how far I've advanced so this is the chest of drawers I've got in the workshop and hopefully we're going to do something nice with it so the first job is going to be to take the function knobs off because I'm actually going to cut new ones I've decided um I'll keep them but I'm going to get new ones. Um, so I'll take them off and then I'll get back to you. Hi everybody, I'm back. I've taken all the knobs off, polyfilled them in, and then I'll sand them down in a minute when it's all completely dry. I am only gonna show you a basic makeover today. Um, I follow a guy on Instagram and YouTube and he's got his own painting academy. He's called Jonathan Mark Mendez and he is brilliant and I've learned all my painting tips off him. So for obvious reasons, I can't show you any of them. But if you log on to his um, website, I'll put a link up there somewhere and um, you can link on to him. I do this more for fun than anything else. Um, I have got my new little logo apron. Hope you like that, the Workshop Bell Cottage. Um, so basically what I'm going to do today is I'm going to paint this um, just around the edges, roughly, in a black. Yeah black um, and then I'm going to let that dry and I'm actually going to wax it so so the reason I'm waxing it is it'll just set the paint so when I actually rub through I'll get more of the black than rubbing straight throughout down to the wood it's really hard getting this camera angle getting everything in so I'll just focus on the furniture and the paint so um, I'll open this up and always give it a good stir um, because Sometimes it gets a little bit thick, but this is quite a new tin, so this should be all okay. So give that a good stir. And then really, you're ready to start. You don't have to prepare the furniture or anything. You can just put the paint straight on. The only tip I do do is, I'm not actually taking the drawers out at the moment. I probably won't even take the drawers out at all. But um, number all the drawers so that when you put them all back in, it um, is easy to put back in. Right, so I've got my brush, got my paint, and um, we'll just go cover all these edges. I'm leaving the drawers in, Let's paint away. You don't have to be particularly neat, because this is not gonna be on show anyway. Um, just... The reason I tend to leave the drawers in is um, sometimes if you get the paint inside, that when you go to put the drawers back in, the paint makes the drawers the area thick and then they don't run very well. So I just tend to leave the drawers in. Um, but the important thing is, once you've got your paint on, is open the drawers because they'll stick. So anyway, let's just get this done. Just get all the, it's basically the edges, I'm just doing the edges. Because that's all I'm gonna be rubbing back really, where it's natural wear and tear. Now what you'll find, because they haven't got the um, the knobs on, I do seem to say that word an awful lot, but as it hasn't got the knobs on, you will need to um, open the drawers once you've painted them. God, I think I'd know better by now. There you go. So once you've done a drawer, slightly open it, and then the next one and the next one and the next one. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rub these down so they're a lot smoother. 
Now I know if this is my dad, he's done that before he painted. <laughs> but I'm afraid this is me. I can't wait. So I had to get cracking even though that hadn't dried properly. I've just got some really low grade um, sandpaper. This is a 60. Um, I'll just tear some of this off and then just rub these down. Just so it's nice and smooth. And then do all of them and then we're going to uh, wax the furniture but I'll come back when I've finished sanding them down because that's a bit boring so I'll come back to you once that's been done right it's coffee time now so I've just come back in and the paints all nice and dry so that's already for the waxing and where the polyfiller was I've now smoothed that off so that's all nice and smooth I mean it doesn't matter if it's a little bit not exactly smooth because at the end of the day it's a shabby sheet look so don't worry too much but I've smoothed it off as best as I can. So the next thing now is to be waxing. I do have two waxes I've got a black wax and I've got a natural clear wax but I'm going to walk for the natural the um, clear wax uh, just because this is not really this is not going to be on show it's just to set it. So just to set the wax in I'll be doing um, a clear wax finish. Right, the wax I'm using is an Annie Sloan wax and this is the clear wax. So I just use a little sponge, it's just as easy as using a brush. So just load the sponge up and then just cover where you've been painting. So make sure that's all covered. And this is going to set the paint underneath. So if you put plenty of wax on, Make sure you've got a lint-free cloth just to rub the sur surplus off. I'm not sure why it has to be nice to be lint-free, but that's what everyone tells you to do, so it's a lint-free. So just make sure that's all rubbed in. see it, it goes slightly darker once the wax is on. Make sure you get it all covered. Plenty of wax on, don't worry about the wax. You just take it off with your lint-free cloth. I'm sure somebody will comment why it has to be lint-free. So I'll get on and do that and then I'll move the camera so that you can finish, see the finished product and then we'll start painting with the next colour. The waxing's all done now as you can see. So the best thing is to leave it overnight because the wax will set harder and then we're ready to put our next layer on. I'm just walking backwards out the door so I can try and get you the whole piece of furniture in. It's about the best I can do. So we're all ready now for tomorrow, um, for the next colour. See you tomorrow. Bye. I just thought I'd show you how easy it is to paint these little handles. Uh, I'm going to use, buy new ones, but the whole point of upcycling is to normally keep it as cheap as possible. So these, these are great little handles, but I just wanted something different. So this is how easy it is. You just get your paint. Um, I always buy some cheap little brushes from Poundland or something, they're not expensive, they're just a, little, a bit easier because they're smaller. And you paint your little handle. I normally paint one side first, because it is a bit fiddly. And then let that dry. And then just when that's dried, just turn it over. It doesn't take long to dry because it's chalk paint, so it won't take long to dry. So this side's already dried, as you can see. So I'm just going to flip it over and just do the other side. I'm not going to paint that bit because that attaches to the furniture. And you don't want that all thick with paint, so I'll miss that bit out. I should have put my brush in water, it's gone a little bit hard.
I'm afraid you do end up getting more on you than you do on the handle. There we go. It's all covered up. And then we'll just wait for that to dry. Right, this little handle's all dried now. So what we need to do to make chalk paint set so it doesn't just flake off, you have to wax it. So I've got black wax, but if you haven't got black wax, don't worry, just use clear. Don't buy black specifically. Clear's fine. But I've been doing it so long, I think I've got every coloured wax known to man. So just get an, um, a sponge and just give it a good wax. Put plenty of wax on. And all the top. And then with your lint-free cloth, just rub all the surplus off. So once you've waxed something, it does take really a few days to set properly. It wouldn't be a good idea to go using it straight away because it does take a couple of days to um, um, set. So that's the handle now, and that was the original handle. So it looks a bit more modern now, doesn't it? Hiya, day two, just got back in the workshop. Um, the black is all set, so that chalky feeling's all gone. So we're now ready to put the next colour on. And I couldn't make my mind up between pure white or old white. But as it's going to have a shabby sheet look, and I want it a little bit aged, I'm going for the old white. This is the end of one tin. I have got another one ready to use. So I just needed to add a little bit of water because it was starting to get a little bit thick at the bottom. So all we're going to do this morning is get the first coat of white paint on. So I'll just move my camera angle and I'll show you. You're not going to believe it. I forgot to turn the camera on. So I've done the first coat. Um, it, I mean, it's pretty easy, the first coat anyway. You've not really missed anything major. You just literally load your brush up with paint and then just put it on, on any which way you want. You don't have to worry about which way you put it on. You're just really getting the black paint covered and the wood covered and remembering to open each drawer as you do it. And then you'll get your first coat on and it'll look a bit messy but don't worry about it because once the second coat goes on that's when we start getting a bit more interesting so uh, i do apologize so just get your first coat on just slap it on and and we'll, we'll take it from there sorry okay this is all dry now but i just wanted to show you the um, paint technique because i'm sure yours is probably better than this I just wanted you to realise that even though it's really patchy, that's not a problem. As you can see, I mean, look at the top. <laughs> so don't worry if yours looks like that. As I say, it probably looks better because the second coat's going on very shortly. That's going on next. Right, I've tried to get the camera a bit nearer so you can see how it's all shaded. And we're now putting the second coat of paint on. I have got a new tin of paint, which is always a bit exciting. It's all new and fresh. So um, let's give it a try so, so you can see it. Hopefully you'll be able to get a good idea. So this is the second coat going on now. And as you can probably hopefully see, it just covers up all that patchy work. Sometimes, because we've got like a black on there, it possibly could take a third coat, but I, th I think this is going to be alright actually. So this is the second coat going on. don't be too worried if you don't get all the black covered up because we are going to be exposing some of that soon anyway so 
second drawer. And try not to go in front of the camera so you can see it better. Don't forget, once you've done that top drawer on the sides, I just wanted to show you that we've done the top three drawers with the second coat now and then you can tell the difference if I move down to what the bottom three are like. So you can already see there's a, a real difference in um, coverage. Day three and this is where the fun starts because now we're going to start exposing the black paint more underneath. There are several ways to do this. Uh, you can either use some sandpaper and you can rub it back and get the look you want. Um, it probably will take you down to the wood. At the moment, I'm not looking to go as far as the wood, but I could change my mind. So at the moment, I'm not using this. You could also use baby wipes. Use them and just rub off what you want. But I'm going for the more messy version. I'm going to spray the paint because it's obviously been dry drying overnight. And this will just soften the paint a little bit, just, just where I'm going to um, distress it. And then with a wet cloth, just rub back to as far as I want. So that's the option I'm going for at the moment. But um, obviously I could change my mind and start rubbing it further back to expose the wood. We'll just see how it progresses. I've tried to get the camera as near as I possibly can. So obviously I'm not a professional, I'm working here on an iPad. So uh, we'll do this top draw first and we'll take it from there. So if we just spray, we'll just do the top draw on the top of it. Give it a spray and then just obviously dab it away. You don't want it soaking wet. And then here I've got a bowl and I've got um, a wet piece of cloth in there. It's just cotton. It's an old pillowcase, actually, a cotton pillowcase. So make sure that's nice and wet and then make sure you wring it out really well. So it's nice and wrung out. So this is your wet one. And then if you just start rubbing back. Can you see? All we're doing is the edges of where it probably would have been knocked or come through with age. You can use any colour underneath. You don't have to use black. You can use, I did it once with blue and it was lovely. So I'm just taking the edges 
And then sometimes in the corner, I do it a bit more in the corner. Because that's where it's normally being bumped or... So it has actually come down the wood anyway, even though I did wax it. So there you go, it doesn't matter too much. It's that aged look. On this drawer here, there's a natural wool, um, wood knot. So I'm just going to emphasise this. This is the wet cloth again. I'm just going to emphasise that little that knot. I quite like that. And there's also some uh, paint here that went on a bit uneven. That's highlighted. And as I'm getting a bit, a bit further down to the bottom of the drawers, I don't mind it being a little bit rougher because that's where um, you'd, you'd get all your knocks and people walking past it. And But you just do what you, you feel is right. You, you If you don't want it particularly looking shabby, just literally take the edges off. Whatever makes you happy. Right, so the painting is actually all finished now. So if you want to just a cheap quick upcycle it's done all you would need to do now is completely wax it all and perhaps put clear wax on and perhaps put a bit of dark wax around the edges just to give it a bit of an aged feeling and then of course you could put your upcycle new handles on but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a transfer on it and you can't wax until you put the transfer on because it has to stick to the chalk paint so if you want to stick with me, I've never done a transfer before, we're going for the transfer on the next session and then we'll be putting new handles on as well. But if you're happy as it is, great, go for it. Maybe next time put a different colour underneath. But if you're leaving me now, I hope you've enjoyed it. But if not, we'll be continuing with the transfer on the next video.